Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the Giant Com Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up Monday about the importance of those two-day joint practice sessions with the Ravens. I'll have a recap of all those practices, of course, as I've done every day throughout training camp. We have a practice report, so stay tuned for those. But today, it's Sunday. I think it is Sunday. Yeah, it is Sunday. So I'm going to have a practice report about today. Now, one thing to keep, one thing for you to know that I did do a, a game recap for Saturday. If you haven't watched that, haven't listened to it, go back and give that a listen. So today, it's going to be kind of a, a talk about what a little bit about what happened out here today, but then also about some more about the games, just some things that I didn't include that I had wanted to include. So today, pretty much of an easy practice. They went about an hour and 40 minutes, and they're going to be in pads Monday Right now, it's scheduled to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So there are no pads today, no shells, really just an install day. So they're installing plays, going over situations, kind of with the uh, the scout team or the show team, as they like to say. Uh, when, so it wasn't it wasn't necessarily pre- preparation for Baltimore as much as installing stuff, seeing how it looks against a defensive look, et cetera. So really kind of an easy day. Some things to note from this, Sadiq Charles did participate during the during the entire practice working at left guard now chris paul went in there at times as well and it's noteworthy because that's the first time charles has been in a full team situation other than just the basic install against no defense and since he heard it since he had the minor calf injury so i don't know what that means for him this week but it's a step in him certainly coming back paul started against the browns did a nice job but if if all things being equal, I think they want Charles. I wouldn't say they want. I think they like Charles to win the job in part because of his athleticism. That's something that when you're blocking for screens in space, you're definitely going to want that. And they're going to, you know, and so, but when you watch Paul the other night, he had a couple of nice run blocks on one nice time where he pulled for Antonio Gibson. I'll get to that in a minute. Another nice run block going the other way. But Charles was back. So there you go. My, or excuse me, uh, Chase Young was dressed but did not participate in the practice. So he had that sting in his neck. Ron Rivera said he would get it checked out again, and then they'll know more. So I don't know yet what his status is for Monday's practice, let alone for the joint sessions up in Baltimore. Fedarian Mathis had had suffered a, a tweaked his calf a little bit during the game, and he did go through some work today but not during the full team session just individual drills and and that was about it logan thomas still not back out there still suffering from the calf injury washington did sign another tight end caden caden smith excuse me he had a couple years ago with the giants had 31 catches but he only had i think he's only he had like three last year in nine games so but he's really it's just camp depth at this point now Tavi De Pritchard knows him because they he coached at Stanford and and Smith played at Stanford so that helps but part of this is the result of Thomas's injury it's not that they think it's going to be this long-term thing I don't know that yet but what it what it really is that the other guys are getting a little bit worn down because there is a heavier volume of plays that they're going through and they have been down a guy for about a week and so but I don't know we still don't know Thomas's timetable here and it's hard because once you hit a certain age in this league and you start getting those calf, thigh, you know, hamstring injuries, it becomes really difficult. So you hope for for Washington's sake, for Thomas's sake, that this is not something that lingers throughout the season or that it doesn't return during the season in other ways. But don't know. But anyways, don't know yet when he's going to come back. Um, so there you go. Now, let's get to some of the stuff. Oh, by the way, another good crowd out here today. There were approximately 8000 fans. A really nice day. Good showing again. It just, listen, the whole camp, there, it's been a consistent, during the week, you're getting a few thousand, you know, 2,500 or so to 3,000. Got the weekend, you had 10,000 a couple weeks ago, 8,000 a day. They're going to have another weekend session next week, and I think they're expecting around 10,000 for that one as well. So a good showing, and again, it highlights how all you guys feel about where the franchise is at. Not just that, hey, this team's going to be great this year, but it's a, hey, I can embrace this team again, and I'm happy for you. Anyway, let's get back to some more stuff from the game. And I did talk a little bit about Deami Brown the other day, but one of the things I wanted to point out with him is something I appreciated last year, 
and it's a reason why I think he can help them this year, even if he's not catching the ball. He's a good blocker. And if you go back, and I think it was like on the Brian Robinson, I think it was like, what, 11 or 12 yards. The first, the first, the scoring drive, the first play of that scoring drive, um, Brown just takes his guy and just drives him down the field. It's just a really good job. But that's what he offers his team as a blocker. He is a good blocker. And I think that's one way, in addition to catching balls, in addition to getting open deep, and making some big plays. And I think he's got to make more than a few big plays for, to, for him to really help this offense. Because when you, you, what happened, what was happening last year, he and Cam Sims would go and you're like, okay, here comes a run. Most likely it was going to be a run because you put, hey, we're putting in our two best run blockers at receiver. What do you think's going to happen? Well, if you can get him to become more of a threat in the passing game, then at least it, it, it limits what the defense may be able to guess is coming when he's in the game. But anyways, just wanted to point that out. Um, another another thing from the game, I want to talk about Quan Martin for a second because like I told you the other day, I mean, I like this. I do like the kid. I do think he can play. Um, it's hard to know right now where he fits in the secondary. As a second-round pick, you'd like to see, like, what is this defined role? But he's got multiple thing areas he can help in. He's going to – I think he can really help him at Gunner. And he could, I think eventually he's going to help him in the secondary in, in various ways. He can be, he can help with Cam Curl in the Buffalo nickel. He can help in the slot. He can, you know, so there's a lot of different ways, but he did have a, in some, there were some tough plays for him in that opener. And one of the things that there's a couple of things with him. First of all, he's a smart kid. So it's a learning lesson. That's how you view everything with this. What did you learn? You move on. And then the other thing that I think that's good for him with this secondary group I think there's a lot of really good leaders in that in that room, both in corner and, and at safety. At corner, you have guys like Kendall Fuller. I think he's a terrific leader. <clears throat> the other guys are vet. Danny Johnson, just a solid vet. At safety, you have guys like Jeremy Reeves, Cam Curl, very willing to help get guys through that. In fact, Jeremy Reeves did talk to him after the game and said, hey, listen, you know, just forget it and go on and don't worry about what people are saying. Just do it and go on, learn and move on. That's all you can do as a rookie. The kid can play and the kid eventually will be able to, to help them. But, you know, sometimes you have a couple tough plays. There were there, there are some other good plays he had too because he had a couple nice plays in the run game, a nice, couple nice plays on special teams. So, you know, anyway, but I think the whole point of me saying that is the leadership I think that exists in that D DB room that can help a guy like Martin if he has a tough game. Another corner, Rashad Wild Goose, been interesting with him because he's gotten reps with the first team in, in the spring and then also in training camp at times in the slot. Well, on, on Friday, he played a lot outside and it did not go well for him. And I think if he really wants to, to threaten for a roster spot, he's going to have to show he can be more than just a slot. Look at the slot situation here. You have Benjamin St. Just who can play it. You have Quan Martin who can play it. You have Danny Johnson who can play it. So Wild Goose has to find another way on the roster other than just being a slot guy. So he's got to be able to play outside. And I think when you look at the, to me, the, when you look at the five corners that I would keep right, certainly would, to me, would be on the roster. It's obviously Forbes, St. Juice, Fuller, and then Danny Johnson, and also Christian Holmes. I really like what he showed. And I told you that the other night, but it's also a special teams play. There was a play on special teams where I, I'd like you to go back and watch it if you can, if you have access to that, access to that. Maybe one time I'll put it on my Instagram page. I'll, in fact, look for that. I'll, I'll put it out there. But it was play. It was like, in fact, I will put it up there. So we're, I am limited as to how much I can put of the play-by-play -play stuff or those, those video highlights. Very limited as to what I can do with that. But I want to show you this five-second clip from that because he just he's double-teamed as a gunner gets through the double team, met by another guy, and just kind of drives through him and drives his way to the ball carrier. He doesn't make the tackle, but it's a really good physical play that gets these coaches excited for that. So that's why, like, you know, to me, Holmes would be on there. Then it's like, do you do you keep a Wild Goose or Tar Castro Fields or someone like that? So if you keep a sixth guy, and I think you could probably sneak them onto the practice squad. All right, let's see. What else we have here? One of the other things I wanted to talk to you about um, from the other night is footwork. Cause there's when you're, this is why preseason is good because you get to work out these things. And it's why I think these joint practices are huge because you get to work on all these things, but the footwork, even for Sam Howell, he has come a long way. It's the number one thing they have worked at with him because the footwork that he performed with at, at, at North Carolina is dramatically different than what he's doing here. And even though he's run the RPOs, there are still things that he's got to get used to in that 
for how they want to do it. For example, on the first run by by Brian Robinson, I think it lost a couple yards where it looks like where Leno does give in the give up the inside pressure. But on that one, it's an RPO. So you're trying to sell run or pass. But if you're not, but you know, if you're the quarterback, you got to be dropping back a little bit and allowing Robinson to stay flat, which then takes away some of that threat of the inside pressure. Maybe he can get around that if you know, and I'm not, you know, you I'm not saying that Leno handled it great. You could block better, but then one mistake kind of compounds another. And that's what you don't want because the guy can make a mistake or get or lose on a on a on a pass block or a run block but the guy can still make a play if everything else goes right. And in this case, they want, they would want Robinson to stay flat because again, RPO, you want the quarterback being a threat to throw the ball, certainly making it look like he might throw the ball. And then if you hand it off, then he's still have that path and you can get around the edge. So just those are little things that you can, that pop up in the preseason that you, you say, okay, you've got to work on this, but that's why these practices, it's great. That's why it's great to play in a game. And I'm glad they went in, you know, they had those guys play as long as they did, because I think they saw, they felt they saw some improvement throughout. Um, so, and the other guy was um, Andrew Wiley. And I told you the other day, he's got a tendency to overset. And what happens when he oversets too, you watch him and his hips start to open up. So he almost leaves a path, whether it's inside or outside. When those hips open up, you're giving the defender an invitation to take that lane. And he's done it before. And, and, and Wiley even talked about at this after practice about some of those footwork issues. <clears throat> and it's something that they felt like they got cleaned up a little bit during the game. It's why, again, why it was important to go back in for that third series and stay in there. And I don't care, like in that situation, the Browns substituted their defensive lineman about midway through that drive. They'd had some nice plays before the Browns sub and then Wiley's footwork got a little bit better. And that's the big key. Just work on your footwork. Don't worry about who's in front of you work on your technique. If you work on your technique, that transfers over to when you're facing the better defender. So that's something they felt, but that's, that's one thing that can should be able to get, you would think would be able to get cleaned up, but you've got to be able to do it. So let's see. So pay attention to how that, how his hips go when you're watching in future games to make sure, is he opening it up too much? Because if he is, then that's a problem. Then you look at that safety that, that occurred and go back. If you go back and watch that play and I'm not posting that on Instagram, if you go back and watch that play, Alex Arma goes to chip the defensive end. Well, what happens is because, because Wiley had set so wide, if Arma chips him, He's chipping him inside, and now he's got a lane to the passer. And if you look at Sam Cosme, the le the right guard, he's blocking down. So clearly, there was a somebody didn't get the assignment because Cosme blocking down, Arma's going to chip, which tells me it's which Wiley's got a set inside, and then you he could chip the guy back inside to him, slow him down, give Howell more time in the pocket. Those are the little things that that add, add up to make a difference. Yes, he lost on the play, but he also mishandled the assignment. But again, he knows that. They know that. And so that's what gets corrected. That's a correctable mistake. The adventure park is ziplining through the trees. It's climbing from platform to platform. It's even an axe throwing competition with your friends. But what the adventure park really is, is opportunity. Reconnecting with friends and family, accomplishing a challenge, and making lasting memories. So book your visit today and choose your own adventure. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to... Well, I, I was going to go back to the DBs, but I already talked about Christian Holmes. Um, also, today in practice, one thing, and I told you this a couple days, uh, last week or so, that they were going to give Ricky Stromberg some reps at guard, whether he was working at the right guard spot with um, during some of the team there during the some of the team drills during the install period and so don't be surprised if he start, get well I told you he's going to get some work there and now he is because if he wants to be active on Sunday he has to be able to play another position if all he is is a center he's not going to be active all year so there you go because Tyler Larson would be the guy because he can play center he can play guard and they need him to be able to play guard if they want if he wants to be active and we'll see how that goes I also thought when you look back at the offensive line play, I know, listen, everybody's going to be critical of it, myself included. There were some plays that just you, you can't have happen a lot, right, if you want this offense to, to be anything. But I did like some of the run blocking here, and I think the run blocking in practices have been fairly good. And I, I liked there was 
couple double, there was a double team, um, Cosme and Nick Gates on Dalvin Tomlinson. I like the way Gates gets his feet around and uh, Cosme catches them, allows Gates to get his feet around. Cosme works off, seals a hole, five yards, just a good solid run. I brought up the first run by Robinson, some good blocking on the edge. Cole Turner, Charles Leno, also with good blocks in that one. Seven yard run. It was Cosme and um, Wiley with a good double team. And then you had Chris Paul pooling, told you about that earlier, Chris Paul pooling and Cole Turner with a good block. And and Antonio Gibson splits uh, Turner and Paul for a seven-yard run. So just a nice job by that group. So even though there were some plays that you don't want to see, and, and one, of the, one of the questions you're going to have or anybody's going to have is, can these tackles hold up in the NFC East? Because as my guy, Bram Weinstein has pointed out, the NFC East is full of good edge rushers. So you're going to need really good tackle play, but that tackle play can also be helped by, I think I told you, John Bates is a strong blocker on the edge that can help the chipping, the, uh, the fullback, as long as you're playing the technique, right, that's going to help as well. So, but individually they do have to get better there. And one of the things I was talking to Nick Gates about this with the joint practices, how important they are. And his response was, it's like, you know, for me, you know, if you talk about real estate, it's location, location, location. He said, it's reps, reps, reps. They just need more reps. They're going to get a lot of them this week. Another guy, and I know some of you asked me about him and um, was Kaz Allen, the returner slash receiver. So, I like I like what he showed. So it showed some good quickness as a returner. And I think he's going to be one to watch over the next two weeks. But when we when Ron Rivera was asked about him, and you can always kind of tell what coaches are thinking with guys, and when you want to be able to maybe protect a guy. So maybe if you can't keep him, you want to keep him on the practice squad just in case. So you don't want to let people know some true thoughts about them. And you heard it with Mason Brooks when he talked about him having a long ways to go. And you know, he does have a ways to go, but but he also has shown that he can can he'll be able to play. I think Kaz Allen is a little bit like that as well. So when Rivera was asked, I think J.P. Finley said he was interesting, and Rivera said he agreed with that word. He also said that he had, felt he had a long ways to go. So you know that makes me wonder either you know you're trying either you try not to you know you're trying to keep him quote unquote hungry or you're trying to make sure that no other teams are going to to hear him and say like, oh, this is the guy to pay attention to. Because if he doesn't, if he makes a big play on the return game, it's going to be hard to to let him to expose him. If he doesn't, then you can sneak him. You can probably sneak him through. And I think one of the things they like is that he spent a lot of time at UCLA at different spots. That they're that they that I think they like having him have the ability to stay at one spot, work on that returner slot, that kind of stuff. So there you go. And also, last thing. On that goal line stand late or on the on the defenses one series, the goal line stand, um, you know, just a nice job by the line. So Nick Chubb not in there, but the line did a good job against the Brown starting line. So we'll just go with that. I, we talked about Emmanuel Forbes with a nice tackle on the line there. Cam Curl was able to fill the hole, but it was Forbes's quickness and aggressiveness getting to the ball carry that made it. But the other guy who made it, and he also made the last play, was Montez Sweat because Montez kind of slashed inside takes two blockers and drives them back just a little bit where it's harder, where the back has to come now outside. And that's where Forbes was. And then the next play sweat with dashes inside goes and makes a play. Just two really nice plays by Montez sweat. The kids having another good camp. Again, one word with him is finished. If he can finish dude's going to get paid. So anyway, that's it for me. That's a practice report for Sunday, August 13th. Yeah, August 13th. Holy crap. Anyway, I'll be back on Monday with another practice report. So I'll talk to you next time.